All right. Well, welcome to the weekly stand-up, Open Research Institute's FPGA work. Uh, what we do is we talk about what we've done uh, over the past bit of time, usually a week, what we're planning on doing for the, over the next week, um, what resources that we need, and any sort of roadblocks that are in the way. Um, what I've been, I'll go ahead and start, uh, what I've been working on is uh, trying to better understand how to update the bitstream. My assumption was that you could do it from Bovado and everything would just work, uh, and that does not appear to be the case. Uh, so learning whole bunches about uh, device tree overlays and FPGA regions and all sorts of really wonderful, powerful things and using the device tree. The FPGA image, the bitstream can be updated in any number of ways, and the uh, sort of the baseline assumption is that it's going to be done either in the first stage bootloader or new boot, uh, and in that, in that in that scenario, then the bitstream is included in those boot files. And it just seems to happen uh, when you do that correctly. So since we want to be able to update the bitstream, I think under Linux um, and not have to go back all the way to the SD card and, and change the SD card image, since most of us are remote, uh, being able to, um, to move the file over into a, into a folder to be able to move it onto the target board and then um, I think all you need to do is reset it. Um, then that seems to be a, the easier way. So made some progress yesterday, uh, learning how to work with the device tree and, and the example of the device tree overlay that was given from the Xilinx webpage, just adding that to lib firmware didn't work. Uh, I think it has to be processed with DTC. There is a helper script from Xilinx that seems to be used by a number of people, but I, I can't find the, the Tekel script. Um, so, uh, if anybody has, has any advice, um, I wrote all of the, I put, put all of this on Slack and the FPGA channel, um, but the, moving towards the goal of being able to, to update the bitstream anytime we like while the device, uh, while the, while the dev board is up and running. So that's what I've been trying to, to figure out how to, how to best support. Um, as soon as we get this working, then I'll train the other lab tech on it, and then we'll we'll have more people here, uh, as many as three that will that will know how this works and be able to intervene if something goes wrong. Um, some other issues with the with working in the lab, we did we've had a lot of success working with IIO um, and through Python, really kind of nice. Uh, there's also uh, C uh, uh, bindings and everything. We have noticed that ever so often using these um, the IIO access or IIO API uh, that the dev board locks up. So we're not exactly sure what's going on there, but we're keeping an eye on it just to make sure that there isn't anything that's that, that we're doing that's that's triggering. And when we say lock up, it means it requires somebody to actually go and turn it off and back on again. Um, so we're, we do not want that to happen for anybody remote that it just stops working like that. Uh, so we're, we're, that's something we've noticed over the past week or so. We're gonna uh, work hard on that. All right, I, the roadblocks that we have are just, so a lot of this is not documented well and it kind of assumes that you have a, a pretty thorough knowledge of what device tree and you know device tree compilation, things like that. Um, so anyway, if, if you can chip in and help, uh, the goal is to put anything that we learn even if it may seem trivial or or uh, simple or or um, something that everybody should already know, um, I think writing it down and and putting it in the um, in our repo as documentation, well, it would tr it would definitely help uh, people uh, get up and running uh, faster. So, all right, that's it from from me. Um, let's see, the next person in the list for for me is Paul. Uh, so you have the floor. Hello. Uh, I've been helping Michelle with all of that stuff. So ditto on all, everything. Um, from a pure remote labs point of view, we have some progress report that the networking is, is right now, I think. Uh, everything is hooked up. Uh, anything on either remote LAN can access anything on the other remote LAN, which I think is cool, although I doubt we'll have very much use for it. Um, there's one literal roadblock, which is that there's some ob large object in the way of getting access to the, the home router at the, uh, the Little Rock location. So the next step in uh, the networking improvements won't be able to happen until that object gets moved. You just literally don't have physical access. 
um, that will have no consequences for anybody out there. It's just a security issue trying to clean things up for the for the LAN. Um, otherwise, things are working in the remote lab, and uh, look forward to getting some of this FPGA stuff worked out so we can exercise it. That's all from here. Well, thank you. All right, next on the list is uh, Anshul Makar. You have the floor. Hey, so yeah, uh, nothing much from my side. Uh, I'm working on some official release, which is going out tomorrow, and then I will be back. Uh, just want to add that, Michelle, you said that you need a help for device tree compilation and uh, maybe some help in kernel. So yeah, I can chip in there. Um, I will connect you or connect with you on the Slack, and then we can discuss the issues that you are facing. Yes, that's all from my side. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Next on the list is Everest. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, I have to take care of, of the children. So just uh, very quick uh, uh, venue. Uh, I see uh, what uh, the, the issue you have, Michelle, and uh, I maybe have some uh, solution. Well, regarding the, the Pluto, uh, the main, um, well, what I have to do is to uh, understand completely the, the board uh, you use. <clears throat> and I didn't take the time to do that. But I have some script already to have some uh, uh, for example, um, uh, building the, the binary, special format binary for uh, the FPGA manager, something like that. I have to, uh, to get it, uh, well, I have to, uh, to check on my, uh, uh, on my files, sorry, I don't have a lot of time, um, but uh, it's good. Uh, you are on a good way and uh, hope that I could help you. Uh, so sorry if uh, I have to, I, I listen to my uh, children, I have to. Yes, uh, I to, understand uh, completely. Thank you. thank you so much. And we'll talk Bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Very good. All right, Stefano, I know you have some audio problems, um, but would it, do you need any help? Um, at all, you can either put it in chat or, or write on Slack or write me an email and uh, let me know. We really appreciate uh, all the, the conversations on Slack and the help. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes. Hi. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, please, you have the floor. No, no nothing, nothing much, um, yeah. So first of all, I would like to thank you for the uh, possibility to work on two uh, remote board uh, normally at home, I'm, I have small uh, computer resources, and uh, by having uh, um, this kind of stuff, uh, I, I'm able also to learn uh, uh, stuff. For example, for an NBD, I discovered it's really fast. Uh, it's one gigabit uh, uh, the line, so I can uh, read all the all the um, all the divide the block devices in less than one second is uh, uh, when I tried the 64 megabyte, uh, it was really <laughs> shocked. Um, and so first, yeah, thank you for uh, giving also the trust uh, to giving me root access. Uh, this is not uh, so, uh, so common uh, stuff, but uh, uh, I appreciate and at the end, uh, yeah, the trust that people do by themselves, it's that by themselves uh, is uh, very important. Uh, and I think it's beyond uh, all the digital stuff and all, uh, and all uh, it's a, a best you know, human being. So um, regarding the NBD, so uh, I copied, I was able to copy the SD uh, content onto the PC. And now the next step is to, to test this as a remote root file system. So I tried with the uh, root file uh, system cre minimal created by Beta Linux, and it's working fine, at the same as the emulator. Um, yeah, I have, seems to have no difference in this in this regard. Uh, I'm happy that uh, a lot of people are helping you, uh, Michelle, and it's very uh, complicated stuff. Um, I was thinking uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong because I, I'm not. Uh, 
I have no uh, much experience on, on this, but uh, I was digging a bit into internet and found that um, Octave has, uh, uh, there are some libraries to, um, to convert from Octave script to C++. So we can, eventually one can think to split the problem in two um, and, uh, uh, and then on the C++ uh, there is the uh, Divado high level synthesis that I'm not sure it's really tied with MATLAB. Maybe it seems like a standalone, uh, like catapult for, um, for the Altera or for the other uh, FPGA that is able then to translate to a set of pipelines, how many, uh, so um, if you have a super scalar architecture, if you have the right pipeline, so you have to um, put a comment in the code uh, like, uh, yeah, let's use a pipeline at which stage, let's uh, roll. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, I, I, this is come from only by reading a um, repository over the internet. So uh, uh, also because uh, it was too, too, too good, uh, too, it was a dream to have <laughs> something like this uh, at the end working just that's fine. And, yeah, thank uh, you. And yeah, well, thank you for uh, for your time and 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 energy. Um, you know, we this is this is why we set it up is so that that people can learn and have access to to good equipment. Um, but very good point about the the octave to C or C plus plus, and then that, and then from that point you can use uh, HLS in Vivado. So so that does kind of cut out the special MATLAB toolboxes. Um, so let me dig into that a little bit more. I, um, and we'll, we'll follow both paths just to fully <laughs> spec, spec out uh, all of the options that are available to us. Um, the last time I used HLS, it was uh, years ago and it was okay. It was, it was all right. Um, and it worked for a, a narrow sort of set of problems. And it was, um, you know, it, it, you couldn't just throw any code at it. But that's also true about the MATLAB HDL coder and the MATLAB uh, uh, general purpose processor coder stuff as well. It's not uh, a magic wand and it's not going to just work for every uh, type of DSP problem. So there, there are definitely going to be limitations and, and restrictions. Um, but having a, that sort of path, I think it opens up a lot more uh, accessibility. It makes it to where, you know, you don't have to know Verilog or HDL. You can you can try to do some designs and, and especially with things like polar codes, there's an awful lot of work in MATLAB and not a lot of work uh, for, for FPGA. So anything that can kind of open that up and, and give access to uh, modern cutting edge uh, forward error correction for, for people that are interested in bringing it to open source community is uh, we're trying very hard to make that as easy as possible. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, looking forward to it. I, we should know a lot more. We have now three different people that are helping with um, trying to work out any this weird licensing issue with MATLAB. And, you know, because it's a proprietary or commercial uh, entity, we do have to kind of worry about the the licenses and, and get it get it worked out. Um, being able to use Octave to HLS, since we already have the Vivado license, the full one that, that lets us use HLS, that might be a little easier, um, assuming that all that stuff bolts together. So we'll look into it and see see if we can get it get that working as well. Hey, just a comment, uh, um, Michelle, regarding the, the stuff of uh, programming the FPGA from the Linux. Uh, I remember from the ZSU 102 um, card I was working uh, two years ago, it was uh, not that kind of uh, bloatware to do, to just uh, to write to a file. So maybe something changed in the, in the meanwhile. Yeah, but yeah. At the end, if the objective is to give possibility to people to specify their own um, TL, and maybe also the TFTP, uh, and then you boot the programming can be uh, can be a way. So yeah, you and other can concentrate on to if, if are more important. I don't know HLS than uh, to keep uh, an eye on this, but. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah you're understand. you're exactly right. I my I'm been kind of surprised that it's that it acts this way. Like, um, so we got the TFTP booting uh, working, 
Um, and so, all, you know, when you when you run Petal Linux and when you export or package everything, it copies it over to TFTP boot and then boot it up. And then we ran into the problem with the, well, we need a larger file system. So the file system wasn't large enough. So the, the good news is that the TFTP booting worked. Um, and so I, since it worked and it, it everything, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, now when you update the bitstream by itself from Vivado, that should be essentially the same sort of experience. Um, so it's it's quite, since we're all kind of, kind of learning and, and, you know, coming up to speed and it, it's quite possible that we've, we've overlooked something that uh, makes all of this a lot easier. I haven't found it yet after searching around on the internet for, you know, and again, the, the base problem, the thing that we keep running into over and over again is that the, um, the assumption from, from all the people that write these tools is that, that someone's always sitting in front of it physically, that they have access to the dev board in front of them. So attempting to do this remotely, we've run into some strange problems um, that don't, you know, it doesn't match up with the assumptions that, uh, from, from people that, that are working on writing Vivado, for instance, or, or the analog devices board. They assume that you're sitting in front of it and that you can change the files on the SD card anytime you like. And that's really the easiest way to, to do the, all of this. And that's where the vast majority of all the instructions on how to use this equipment, they assume that somebody has physical access to the SD card. And yeah, we do. We have three people that can, that can come over and mess with the SD card. The effort to get it to where somebody logging in remotely can just change things is worth, worth doing. So um, I think we're pretty close. To, to being able to get that to, to work. And it may require people to do something weird with a device tree overlay. That's, I think that's probably gonna be the, the one way to do it in, um, if, you're, if you're up and running, the dev board is on, you're logged in remotely, that, you know, if it's a device tree overlay, then resetting the board after you copy over your bitstream, it'll just work. And I think that would be superior to changing the SD card. Um, and it might, it might, it seems like it might be superior to using TFTP. I don't know. Well, if we, if it turns out that one is better than the other, then, then that's what we'll go with. Yes, uh, one has to take care in having interrupt installed and uh, I don't know, any kind of polling uh, obviously can destroy the, then because you are reading to a resource that is programmed under the hood. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> from, uh, yeah, from Python layer, from user space, it's just like a, a cut uh, into a device. <laughs> but then uh, one should really know what, uh, so be aware that maybe I have to stop the application, uh, I don't know, I'll remove the module. Uh, yeah. Kind of yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it looks like Paul has something on video. Did you want to talk about what you're showing off, Paul? No, oh, I'm just just playing with the video uh, capabilities. This is a live feed from the uh, spectrum analyzer in the remote lab, running a little example script that came with the analog devices stuff. This generating two different carriers uh, on the two different transmitters of the AD 9371, uh, but also adding them together on the single carrier that's being fed to the spectrum analyzer. This is the version where it just makes sine waves and doesn't use the built-in interpolation. You can see that the spectral purity is, is terrible. I'm not sure why it's that bad. Maybe because the, the stream can't keep up with the 245 mega samples per second that it's using. Um, if you switch to an interpolated synthesis using the filter inside the 9371, then the the sine waves are pretty and beautiful. In fact, I can switch to that right now if I uh, click a few things, but uh, this doesn't need to take up the meeting. No, it's just nice to see. That's is my, the assumption is, is that the, the um, reference design, the HDL blocks that, that analog devices delivers um, that we can look at in Vivado uh, and see that all the data flows uh, the assumption is that it will take, be able to take the, the modules that we're writing and put them into that, that project, make that bitstream, and that bitstream goes off to the ZC706. And what you're seeing on the, um, on the spectrum analyzer will be um, like 
the modulated the mo types of modulations and codings that we're we're trying to put in. So we're just trying to get to the point where we're adding custom IP and then able to write the bit stream to the to the board and and do all of this to where it's remote friendly. But lots of stuff is working. Yeah, we'll point out that this live uh, video stream from the Spectrum Analyzer is available to anybody remotely. Uh, there's a tutorial on the on the repo in the remote lab section on how to get it set up. It's been very rock solid reliable for me. Of course, I'm on the local LAN, but uh, it's nice to be able to see Spectrum moving in real time without having to take screenshots and guess what's going on. Yeah, thank you. Maybe with the I, what I can do is um, is go get the link directly, uh, the direct link to that tutorial, and I'll put it here in the in the video for the for the meetup. Cool. All right, that's uh, I think that's it. Um, our lab tech one says hello. Not able to drop by though uh, for for today, um, but we do have a, a lab tech that was working on the uh, cell matching for for batteries. Uh, and he's uh, interested in learning more to support FPGA work in the in the lab, take care of uh, basic tasks and maintenance and and things like that. So he says hello. Uh, and that's it for for me. Anybody have any last comments before we close for the day? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. All right, see you on Slack, and uh, looking forward to next week. I put the link to the video tutorial in chat in case anybody wants to grab it in the next three seconds. Okay. Yeah, I'll wait a few seconds. All right, see y'all on Slack. Okay.